Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Acer Chromebook R11, which is a Chrome OS laptop with an 11.6 inch touchscreen display, and it runs Google's Chrome operating system, which is based around the Chrome web browser, but it's also one of the first Chromebooks that is capable of running Android applications. So if you want, you can go ahead and open up the Google Play Store and install all sorts of different Android apps that are touch friendly, and it has a convertible design, so you can also hold it like a tablet or prop it up this way or do whatever else you like. But what I want to show you is something else that I can do, which is run a very specific Android application called Crossover. Now, Crossover was originally designed for Mac and Linux computers, and it's a way of running some Windows applications on those systems. But now there's also a version available for Android. And as of the time that I'm shooting this video, which is August 26, 2016, it's still in beta, it only works on devices with Intel processors, and it's designed for Android. But since some Chromebooks have Intel processors and can run uh, Android, we can now run Crossover on these devices. So I'll show you a little bit of how, how this works with the caveat that, again, this is very much beta software. So it opens what looks sort of like a Windows uh, environment here. There are versions of Crossover for other platforms that don't necessarily require you to uh, to get stuck with this you know, let's apps run in their sort of own windows and somebody's trying to message me. And um, so I'll show you how a couple of things happen here. First, let's go ahead and open up a word processor that I've installed. This is Abbey Word. It's a lightweight uh, Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, uh, open source word processor. It's uh, a little funky the way that it works here because it, uh, it has this enormous cursor, but you can see that it does work at least. Uh, to let you uh, create documents and open documents and so forth. If you want something a little bit more powerful, I found that LibreOffice also works. It takes a little bit longer to load, but uh, but it does open. And so this allows you to run full desktop style applications through Android, emulating a sort of Windows kind of compatibility layer. So we've got spreadsheets here. Uh, I find that sometimes it gets a little bit sluggish when you're just opening these things, but uh, once they're up and running, they tend to work okay. And so we've got spreadsheets. And one of the things that's probably most exciting to a lot of people is that the Steam game client also works. Now, not every game available from Steam is gonna work, and there's a limited amount of storage space on a lot of Chromebooks, so you're not necessarily gonna be able to download huge games and get them to work, or games that require certain types of hardware, but some simple stuff like uh, older titles works pretty well. So for instance, I've got, I've got uh, System Shock 2, loads up nicely here. Now, when I try to load this in full screen mode, I've, uh, I've run into some problems, so I'm just going to go ahead and load it here in this windowed mode. And actually, I'm even going to adjust the screen resolution a little bit to uh, make it smaller. because you might notice there's a little bit of lag here. Actually, now it's doing even other weird things. Um, there's a little bit of lag in the game when I sort of try to move my mouse cursor, and I found that at lower resolutions, there's not as much lag. So loading that game again. Okay, so let's go ahead and load game in progress. And I'm using the mouse to change the camera angles, and that can be a little bit jerky. Oop. Actually, let me try and do it with the touchpad instead of a mouse. I'm also not great at first-person shooters, so somebody with more experience might be able to do a better job of this. Anyways, walking works just fine. It's looking up that I'm having issues with. Come on. Looking at the floor, here we go. So we can go into basic training. You'll want to learn some basic abilities. First, you 
should go into the basic training center. To pick up Welcome, trainee. While you're in our virtual training courses, we provide you with a simulated cyber interface. This training interface is identical to an actual military-grade cyber interface. Now, let's try it out. Move the mouse. See how it changes where you look? That means you're in shoot mode. Hit the tab key. This puts you in use mode, where you can use your mouse to interact with items in the world. Open your primary MFD, or multifunction display, by clicking on the MFD button near the bottom of the screen. This display shows your strengths in various areas. When you're ready to continue, press the tab key to go back to shoot mode. Try changing between modes until you get the hang of it. Follow the red path along the ground to the next training station. So you get the idea. That is System Shock 2 running in crossover through Android on a Chromebook. Uh, as for installing applications, it can be a little bit hit or miss. You can try downloading certain applications off the internet and uh, running the installers. I found that that worked just fine when I was trying to install Abbey Word. Didn't work very well with some other software. Or you can just you choose the install software option here and it'll give you a list of some known applications that work. Or you could try searching for others and uncheck the known applications. Oops. And try to type Firefox appropriately. And I don't want one of these really old versions, so let's pick a fairly recent version and click install. And what it'll do is attempt to download not just the program itself, but any dependencies. Now this could take a while, so I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. But basically, that's the process for installing software. So you can run the full desktop version, for instance, of Firefox on a Chromebook without necessarily having to install Linux using Crouton or something else. So it's, uh, it's an interesting way to open up the possibilities. Um, and theoretically, you don't need a Chromebook to do this. You should be able to do the same sort of thing using any Android device with an Intel processor. Um, there just aren't a lot of Android devices with Intel processors right now. There's a couple of tablets, I think, with Baytrail chips. Maybe a few Cherry Trail uh, options. Not a lot of phones. And on the off chance that this finishes real quickly, there we go. Let's go ahead and see if we can launch Firefox. Not import anything. And we've got the Firefox web browser. Full desktop version of it. on a Chromebook. Chrome renders the pages much faster, but it works. Now things do get a little bit weird when you try to go full screen here. Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't automatically adjust everything properly to the size of the screen window. And I found that it's extraordinarily easily, easy to accidentally close an application by hitting the back button um, because it doesn't just close the app that you're currently in, it closes everything. And there goes crossover, so we can reload it. And in the past, I found that sometimes, uh, before I started shooting this video, I was able to get it to load in full screen, but now it seems to constantly want to load in this smaller window. So. For beta software, it's intriguing. I'm not sure how useful it is, but it definitely shows promise. And when it comes out of beta, uh, it could open up the possibility of running all sorts of applications that might otherwise be difficult to run on a Chromebook, assuming you've got a model that supports Google Android applications. And now that there is Android support for some Chromebooks, I expect that we're going to start to see models with additional storage and, and other features that you might not have gotten on early low-cost versions. So the Acer Chromebook R11 is, uh, is really kind of an interesting device to have right now because it is one of the first that can support not only Android applications, but also Crossover, which is this uh, software that allows you to run Windows apps. Crossover is commercial software, but while in beta, it is available for free. I'm not really sure what the long-term plans are going to be, uh, if it's going to cost money, how much money, etc., for Android. But uh, you can sign up for the beta at Codeweaver's website 
for Crossover, and you can find the link for that in the description to this video or at Lilliputing.com. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at Crossover for Android Beta running on a Chromebook.